I am really, really honored to be here in this uh, amazing uh, city with, with this institution. Uh, Louis, with, uh, especially with the Parliament, Louis Kahn's building, but also uh, I've been here just uh, not too long, but I could feel the, the energy of the city and uh, it's going to change dramatically in 10, 20 years, I can tell, because that happened in Korea and I saw in China it happened and I feel that energy here. And uh, it was uh, really interesting to attend this morning's uh, presentations and discussions and, uh, and uh, really uh, for me, like uh, I, I, am, uh, I become a student again in long time, <laughs> in 30 years. I learned so much this morning. I was amazed with uh, presentations like Adel Santos and, and I wish that uh, kind of study we had 20 years ago in uh, rural uh, cities in Korea, now it became really chaotic without uh, orders and, and uh, really interesting uh, discussions with uh, Peter uh, and uh, uh, it was great to see Kasi. I was wondering where he was uh, for the last several years and, and it was a really fantastic experience uh, to learn about the uh, uh, really interesting philosophical uh, ideas and I don't agree totally with, I didn't agree with uh, Professor Islam, for example, about denying the consumerism, but definitely it uh, was a kind of shocking to me and uh, to see uh, pers uh, in different perspectives. And, and uh, Votrong, I really respected his work and I was so happy to meet him in the airport last night. And, and uh, all these people uh, involved here, like uh, even uh, panelists like uh, Nicolas, uh, I was so happy to uh, meet uh, uh, Etaha uh, Gracious and, and talk to people we commonly know. And uh, this is really becoming my... Uh, education period to look back my work and I spent a lot of uh, I spent uh, I didn't give a lecture last few years but but I tried to spend uh, as much time as I could because I know uh, I was I had to present this uh, to all important people and uh, so so actually last few days especially last night and this morning was really uh, interesting time for me to think about my architecture. And uh, today's discussions, uh, panel discussions, uh, woke me up to think uh, about uh, what I have been doing without thinking I've been running last 20, 25, 20 years. Since I opened my practice uh, 21 years ago, I realized I've been running and running and running and not thinking as much recently. And uh, this world has been changing and uh, I have to really, uh, I think this opportunity will provide me to look back my architecture and what this architecture is for. And as uh, Professor uh, Islam uh, talked about this morning, why I do architect uh, do this. And, and I think I've been doing just what I've been doing. <laughs> I had a goal and I have pictures in my head and, and I've been running, but, uh, but it was uh, really inspiring this morning. And uh, so uh, I will try to explain uh, uh, my projects through one frame. Uh, architecture cannot be seen through one frame because it's just, uh, uh, reflects and influence a lot of things, but, uh, but uh, to help you understand in short period of time, like 45 minutes left, this clock says, so uh, I'll try to go pretty fast. <clears throat> this is a Go game, Sedo Lee and uh, AlphaGo played a few days ago. It was a very hot uh, issue in Korea. But I really enjoyed the game. I, uh, uh, until I went to U.S. to study architecture, I was grown up in, born and raised in Seoul, Korea. I played this. I, 
When I do architectural site planning, I always uh, think about this game. You know, this game is uh, totally, I can say, Far Eastern you know, game, which is very different from Westerners' point of view. It's uh, very simple, white stone and black stone. Uh, only uh, the, this is the game between the relationships. You know, you make more space or flow. So positioning of the games, placing the stones, uh, you create the relationships. You know, uh, with one stone, you know, it's nothing, it doesn't mean anything. But when the two play in this uh, grid, it makes the game, which is very different from uh, Western chess. Each, each, each uh, thing has its own shape and, and uh, way of going or its own definitions. But often when you see uh, things in uh, Korea, Japan, China, the relationship of un yang just, uh, just uh, been developed the last two, three thousand years. The concept of un yang is a very different way of seeing things, like a uh, very different way of perceiving things. Like uh, if you look up dictionary, like a Britannica, I mean uh, uh, Oxford Dictionary or any dictionary, you can uh, look up light. It says light, some kind of uh, physical kind of element, and uh, it has a certain speed and certain characters, and Einstein proves that bands and these things. But uh, when uh, you look up uh, the Eastern philosophies and ideas, light is in uh, Tao Te Ching, is something that cannot be understood without darkness you have to make it dark so you can see the light. Uh, darkness is something that can be recognized only there is light. So it's like a relationships and uh, uh, the moment of tension uh, exists in the relationships, not by its own shapes or its own objects. And it's a thousand years old uh, ancient uh, Chinese painting uh, the idea of abstract just started with Zen Buddhism. When Buddhism came from uh, India uh, about a thousand years ago in China and Korea, developed uh, as its own with a reflection of their own culture, influenced by uh, uh, Tao Te Ching. Uh, well, like if you believe in, you know, some nature or being nirvana, you are the Buddha, you know, you are the God, basically. Not following the book, teaching of the books, but, uh, but uh, meditation and the idea of abstraction started and abstract paintings started, but, but uh, in, throughout the history you can see the, 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 the balance between un yang and uh, relationships. And uh, if you see the site plans, if you see, if you go Korea, China, Japan, the building shapes the last 2,000 years pretty much the same. But in different region, uh, what developed very differently was the site planning, positioning and placement. Uh, because of different uh, topographies of the regions, I I think Korea had more like undulating lands and uh, this positioning of the buildings. Uh, you create the space between and architecture exists in the between spaces, in the moments of between. So, so uh, uh, white or void uh, becomes object surrounded by solid. Like uh, as Tao Te Ching says, uh, in Tao Te Ching, one of the chapters he says, uh, uh, bowl becomes uh, you know, the, uh, useful because of the void. You know, and uh, all these kind of relationships and void and solid and negative and positive. I'm talking about uh, perception in relationships rather than its own just characters. I will go uh, through uh, maybe about 15 different projects I did in one of the region uh, area about one hour uh, west of Seoul. I did a, a series of uh, projects through last about 10 years. 
uh, first project I'm going to show is the one in the middle concrete box house. Uh, and then I will go three others. In this one, uh, I try to, because uh, this lot was given by my client free in a condition I built something there, move in. So my clients and he had friends and they wanted to come into this place to live. And uh, I tried to uh, build something very simple without spending much money. So I made a concrete box. So I wanted to design a building that can be built very easily. So only two concrete pores. One was the foundation and floor, and second one was wall and roof. And no waterproofing and no protection for waterproofing because uh, we thought uh, we understood how we can make the concrete not to crack. So with a metal trowel go over. So uh, it's about 14 meters by 14 meters uh, box with a bedroom and bathroom and living room and courtyard in the middle. So on the elevation, when you see the elevations, most of buildings today uh, not all, but a lot of these, uh, my buildings, small buildings, you, and when you see, uh, you can see um, almost no elevations or just the punctuations of uh, functional windows. Cross ventilation is important, but, uh, but uh, try to design this from uh, the view of construction and view of the uh, relationship between just um, it's a concrete box with two openings, major openings. One is toward the sky, one is toward the earth. Uh, that's the most important element in Tao Te Ching's or Eastern philosophy. And the uh, rest of it, uh, pretty much straightforward concrete uh, box. And uh, you can open the door, you can see the courtyard, and uh, so opening toward the sky, 12 inch thickness, and interior space has eight inches plus four inches insulation. So just this uh, only one, just a pour, very simple. And outside you can close the windows entirely. And I will go briefly. Uh, another house I did uh, right next to it, on the bottom, uh, Earth House is uh, uh, developed from my thesis I did at uh, GSD Harvard when I graduated the last semester about uh, thesis uh, title was experience and perception and uh, basically digging into the ground making architecture of relationships of earth and sky and the walls and uh, each room, uh, very tiny small rooms, about 1.7 meters by 1.7 meters, uh, 1.6 meters actually, which is the smallest unit in traditional Korean architecture or in Japan is called Ken or in Korean is called Kan, one Kan house. So just uh, barely enough for one, one person. So the first project I showed was in the top. The other one, the second one is here, buried into the ground. Uh, rammed earth. The shell was built of concrete. We use con concrete is uh, so far most common and uh, most economical material. But, uh, th so I made a concrete shell to protect the earth, but the rest part of the building is built out of the material, this earth, 100% from uh, the ground we dug in. So we didn't, uh, I didn't want to mix with anything, but we wanted to test with the earth. It's a small house with a concrete shell. 
and the floor was built with the dirt. It actually is a radiant floor, so it could crack. So we uh, uh, hard, uh, gave a lot of pressure to keep it not to crack much. So small, uh, small openings, about one meter high openings. And the third one, community house on the left, lower left, uh, is a tilt following the road. So it's a geometry, and the uh, building disappears again into the landscape. And two different geometries, one rectangular and one tilt. And interior space is a juxtaposed of the two. So this community is supposed to use this space uh, for yoga and small seminars. And the last one is the currently built last year, about 10 years after the concrete box house. It took uh, 10 years to come up to this point. Uh, right on the top is really steep extremely steep hill, so when I went up, I didn't know what, how, what kind of I could build. It's not that large lot. It looks larger here, but it's not very large. Very tight, with all steps go up. And just uh, basically simple box that try to follow the uh, topo. Uh, with a couple bedrooms and one guest room courtyard. The frame I talked uh, in the beginning uh, I was going to talk about was the uh, placement and positioning and uh, creating the relationship with the surroundings and uh, somehow in Eastern philosophy, we believe the, there is an energy that flow uh, along the landscape and we call the key and let the key flow. So from different levels of your eyes, you can experience, you can see differently and you can feel differently about the earth and sky and roof. And uh, this is uh, another small project, Meditation Hut, uh, which is uh, the lower right hand side uh, project that dug into the earth and opening toward the, end, the other side. In Jeju Island, uh, it's a unique uh, island with uh, volcanic stones. So try to use volcanic stones and uh, try not to disturb as much landscape and try to make the experience of it uh, uh, interesting, but the building as the other buildings uh, disappears. Uh, traditionally, we use all uh, rice paper on roof, uh, on ceiling and wall, but also the paper with the soy uh, oil, this uh, paper and radiant heated floor with small closets. Uh, another house uh, with a very different condition. When I visited the site, I saw this uh, fast driving driveway that creates a lot of noise. So try to have uh, earth uh, against the wall and try to open toward the other side looking uh, the hill on the other side. And uh, this sketch kind of show with a courtyard uh, on this L shape. Oh, I don't see the light very well, but anyway. 
So it's basically L-shaped, but uh, little uh, uh, cut corners to allow more light and uh, a little more excitement to the courtyard. When you can close this wall entirely, but you can open that too. Small rooms, uh, living room. And uh, uh, I had a client that came to my office and asked me to design really nice looking kindergarten, two story kindergarten. And I visited the site and they showed me uh, this was a really nice area to build. So asked me to design something there. But when I look at the hill on the top uh, with some nice trees and it was a really nice area, could be perfect for playground for kids. So instead of uh, doing a nice looking building on the top of it, how about I propose the concrete plate that continues that uh, open space. So concrete slab and uh, continue the roof and from downstairs, you have uh, try proposed openings so you can look up the hills above. So again, when you see the sections and elevations, not much to see. But uh, when you go in, actually this wall, I bent slightly. So when you walk in from there, uh, you experience a little more interestingly. And from this open ground, it continues and uh, made a garden for kids to be educated about flowers and gardenings. And uh, a little tilt roof with uh, rammed earth. And again, here, just a 12 inch concrete uh, rooftop without beams. And uh, inside there, you see the metal beams and earth walls and the glass. And when we had a rammed earth wall at the corner, we embedded a metal angle so we can have glass right against it. So this is the main entrance. When you come in, you still are in outside space. So another uh, new town project, totally different condition of the site. Uh, uh, had uh, different levels from the car entering areas and this open landscape. So I had uh, three, one, two, three uh, larger boxes and try to create the moment between the three the tension between the three and uh, tie them together with a wooden screen. Uh, try to horizontally tie so without much uh, vertical disturbance. Try to emphasize more horizontals. And the left box is lifted by metal structures so you can feel more light Underneath is a, like a outdoor seating area. It rains a lot in summer, and summertime outdoor use, use space will be used mostly, so it's a covered area. So this concrete was poured after metal frame below. And uh, some of these windows all continues without columns. And uh, it's uh, really fun to play with the structures. And, and uh, I spend a lot of time with the structure engineer discussing about how structure works and construction details. And we made this uh, metal screen at site with one wire that goes all the way continuous. Now we import this material, but at the time we did not import it. So made it at the site. So when you uh, go around, you can see uh, different places and connects and 
interior and exterior space flows, and the relationship makes the architecture, I think. So I, I did the house about 15 years ago and the other uh, exhibition all about five years ago. And the house, when I was asked to do house for writer, and I visited the site, I really felt this, saw this kind of flow of this land and energy and water. So try to have the house just uh, follow it. Right after that idea, I uh, just uh, sketched this. Uh, this was uh, the early sketches before I finalized the ideas, how to bring the light. I studied carefully how he sits and writes on floor. And uh, he had very strange uh, way of you know, living. He doesn't sleep at night, he sleeps early in the morning. And uh, so how to operate eastern windows and, and what kind of breeze can pass through his bodies and, and uh, studied uh, these details first. And then exterior came after that. And all, all of these moments were designed first. And uh, windows just opened, just following those things to create the moment of the relationships. And uh, about 10 years later, I was asked to do the exhibition space, gal exhibition gallery space on the right. And I visited the site again. I saw these beautiful mountains surrounding and I wanted to uh, have a space or architecture that can recognize the uh, surrounding more strongly or vividly. So made a courtyard in the middle, so you can see uh, on the left, uh, roof is lower. So when you are inside, you can see this hill. Uh, when I visited there in January, there was some snow and it was extremely beautiful, silver green. And I wanted to have people recognize uh, the mountain and nature. And uh, I did a cement company, Hanil Cement Company's guest house. I tried to uh, experiment uh, with the concrete use. And I visited the site again, and, and, and I get influence at the site always. And uh, more, than, more than the program, uh, I get more inspirations from site than program. And, uh, and uh, I saw the lot that I was supposed to build was cut like 30 years ago when they built cement factories. They cut this uh, uh, lower foothill. So I tried to, I proposed to have that uh, repair the hill, bring the hill back and try to bring the flow into that uh, in the relationship. And I try to make something unique with concrete. And uh, uh, University of Manitoba, I uh, contacted, uh, there was an institute for CAST, CAST, Concrete Institute, and uh, they helped me to make this interesting fabric foam concrete. This is a construction site. We made uh, fabric foam concrete and tilt up construction. A guest house on the right, and more exhibition on left and guest house above. And uh, the hill, uh, we had a seven meter uh, dirt to continue the hill and this continues here. And uh, landscape, a uh, small hill continues in the middle of the courtyard with uh, pine trees. And try to recycle the concrete. And so uh, uh, when we uh, pour that uh, fabric foam concrete, we had to make a floor, pretty solid floor, and we broke the floor and, and, and we used that uh, concrete and made a western wall which becomes very hot in summer, so it will protect the sun from western side. And uh, did this project a uh, long time ago, about 20 years ago, right after we opened the office. And here again, I visited the site, and the uh, site was already 
beautifully undulating, so didn't want to touch the site. And, we, and I saw uh, passing by to go to the site uh, some agricultural buildings, and I tried to uh, use that scaffolding like agricultural building structures with plywood, really uh, low cost housing for mentally challenged people. They uh, do farming together, cooperative farm, and they live together like dormitory. And the slight, uh, uh, lightly sitting on the undulating site uh, with plywood boxes and, and uh, overall structure and construction methods are very conventional with uh, agricultural sheds and in Korea uh, use this kind of pipe constructions. And uh, we have typhoon in Korea in summer, so it gets very strong wind sometimes. So I had to re reinforce with I-beam. You know, if you see carefully on the roof beams, there are I-beams. And, and uh, this pipe is attached to the main structure, wooden structure building. And I had to reinforce with wires. try to let the uh, nature flow. And this uh, current project, we did a hotel, uh, which is a uh, similar kind of layout in nature, but this time not plywood boxes. By ocean, south end, ocean uh, in Korea, which gets really strong wind, the typhoon right come into this every summer a few times. So, uh, decide to use concrete boxes rather than plywood boxes. But here again, we try to study very carefully about the topo and place concrete boxes and, and uh, try to find the relationship uh, through the frame of solid concrete box and let uh, uh, the landscape flow kind of between. And landscape designer wanted to take all this rock down. I had to fight very strongly to keep it. And because uh, I tried to build buildings around it, and suddenly she uh, tried to break the rock. She thought it was ugly, but, but uh, I thought uh, it was important to keep existing. So basically, uh, as you can see here, the concrete is kind of smooth. I try to get rid of the corn mark as much as possible or connecting joint lines, which is complicated things. So it's cantilevered structure with a post tension. So this wall uh, works like a beam. So we have like 40 centimeter deep walls and try to take advantage of that structure uh, make uh, interestingly uh, shaped uh, or deeper window. Summer sun in Korea to be protected uh, is very high in angle, but winter sun is a low angle that goes in. So overhang is always desired in Korea. And when you go inside, uh, you can see that slightly curved walls and windows. <clears throat> And interior spaces, we didn't design much, but uh, tried to develop the ceiling material and the flooring materials very, very carefully. And uh, 38 millimeter thick, uh, I can explain about the material later. It's a light color material. And uh, so totally different site. We uh, sometimes have, it's the middle of downtown Seoul, Gyeongbok Palace. It's almost as important as Times Square in New York. It's at that corner. Uh, looking toward the palace and presidential house on the back. It's a curved uh, side. It was very difficult to make rectangular buildings that, you know, I mostly uh, use that uh, rectangular angles because it's easier to draw and easier to make. But here, this angle, it's supposed to have angles and and there are some historical buildings between, so I split the building into the two, allowing the flow from the old fabric of downtown Seoul to the historic uh, landmark in front. 
and uh, a floor plan and section. We spend a lot of time to develop these horizontal members you know, to insulate, uh, to make a thermal break. It was quite challenging things and lots of interesting stories with it. But 85% uh, of the glass is flat, only 15% curved uh, because we had to uh, cut down the cost. And uh, construction cost was not higher than uh, any uh, buildings in that area built. And this is a Kiss Wire uh, center. We designed a museum, dormitory, and training center. Now we are uh, just renovating their old factory building into exhibition hall for Busan Biennale and some cultural uh, activities. And uh, uh, Busan, city of Busan is beautiful with ocean and mountain. So it's one of a unique city in Korea, a second largest city. It has hills and ocean, but hills been destroyed the last 20 years greatly in Korea. I'm sure that's happening in China and developing countries. And uh, so I try to insist to keep the hills. Uh, it's almost the only hill left. And all the surroundings, all just cut and, and the driveways cut. And, and uh, try to keep the hill. Uh, but I had to put a lot of uh, square phrases into this space. So, so basically it's like a large uh, earth house digging into the ground and try to have this uh, disappearing into the landscape basically. And I have always great interest in structure. It's a wire making company. So have this uh, ramp that goes out to the outer courtyard and connects to exterior other space. And here again, uh, construction budget was very low and extremely low budget building. So we could not uh, use much of developed like uh, beams to bend the metal plates, but mostly hand bent and uh, hand made right at the site, job site. And one of a uh, few, uh, my uh, last project, uh, Prefab house, uh, been uh, developing prefab house uh, and testing with the idea of like uh, placing and positioning. Uh, so make a series of uh, like two, th three different kinds of buildings here, basically two different size building, small building blocks and try by uh, putting that together in different ways based on different site conditions, try to create interesting moment and uh, uh, this is the combination that we are testing and building in Bozeman, Montana now. So I'm going to visit in May again and the uh, structure is all up. And a uh, few elements, Pre precast, prefab house has been tried the last about 50 years, 60s, through 60s and 70s and failed because they ignored, you know, interesting aspects of designs in prefab houses. And, and uh, now uh, there are many interesting prefab houses around the world today with interesting ideas. And uh, if we build it properly, we can live with a smaller space, with a smaller energy and uh, more smarter way and uh, creating more interesting moments and relationships and exterior you know, courtyard. And uh, I tested uh, with a few different, uh, examined uh, with a few different materials. One is precast concrete, wood, or like a metal sidings, or recycled material from tire. And uh, we decided to use that material. And uh, one of our neighbor complained about that industrial material. So, uh, have a little more friendly, but uh, wanted to have uh, totally uh, uh, maintenance-free kind of landscape material with uh, found rocks and local weeds. 
so they can uh, grow naturally and it changes in rain and snow with a different temperature and build simple insight. And this is uh, now under construction, photograph of last week. And we do sometimes large scale projects, but the idea is all the same. But here in this training center for Hyundai car mechanics around the world, they're supposed to come here, get trained how to fix new you know, Hyundai cars. And uh, all diagrams given, so almost the building shapes given, driveways and training center size and all the relationships in front, training center and dormitory on the back. And uh, uh, we have uh, expanded the metal uh, with uh, different gradations of openings and uh, try to keep the box pretty simple, but uh, uh, reflect off the light in summer and uh, allow more uh, light into the space in winter and keep the space inside very simple and uh, dormitory on the back is like uh, some other buildings we did before. It allows the flow of the ground. All these ugly uh, surrounding concrete walls are there now, but we try to break the wall and bring the landscape flow into the space a little more. It's on, uh, in, on, on progress. Uh, we are starting the construction of the project next month. And we did, did a commercial building uh, for Louis Vuitton, uh, it was invited a competition for flagship store. And for the competition, we made this glass with the powder we poured and uh, tried to study the reflection of the light and try to make the experience of shopping more interesting. So we tried to develop uh, a glass facade that could uh, distort people and material inside and from inside to outside and make the experience of the uh, shopping more interesting. And I always uh, try to deal with structure from beginning of the studies and these four two corners more visible when you pass by this track because cars drive this ways. And one corner becomes a small park for the city, the other one becomes the main entrance. And all structures you know, relying on that uh, and uh, uh, two other uh, retaining walls and truss structure. And we did the Milano Expo uh, competition, invited competition project again. And uh, uh, we have done some uh, Biennale or uh, Expo projects, but always I realize it's what a waste. You know, uh, uh, when we talk about all, all environmental issues and when I go to the site and see the buildings, it's all lie. I realize and how, you know, we make, how much garbage we make. And here the goal was not to make any garbage, but 100% uh, recyclable. So we propose this building using scaffoldings and some uh, thin fabric-like uh, thin material uh, modulated uh, to be recycled. And I proposed the uh, agriculture training center with uh, reflected uh, with uh, solar panels and try to have all uh, micro, just a small a fan instead of uh, air conditioning, so allowing the air flow of the Milano area and uh, help with the direction of the air flow with the fans. And uh, we did a competition project, invited competition, they invited 10 Korean architects to do a big, one of the largest uh, public, uh, pri as a private development project with 100 story buildings and hotels and, and 3,000 cars and, and, uh, and uh, the concept, even though it looks so large and different, the concept we kept was the same. We had a ground level, just the flow of all surrounding existing 
instead of blocking, but uh, uh, having the major buildings above ground and making with the rooftop. So flow of these streets and parks and uh, allowing this rooftop uh, space and all these on the left structures or temporary structures based on events and use, it can be built. And uh, so we propose this, uh, it has theaters and other things and, and uh, outdoor, covered outdoor area with solar panels. And that's it for today. Thank you. The, the front bench today has been rather inactive. Um, perhaps I might want to ask you about the first few houses that you showed, which are fully submerged in the open landscape, while in some of the more tighter sites, not so tighter, you know, why underground? Yes, so um, uh, what decisions do you Why have underground? Right. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe uh, you can Just tell me later. <laughs> but uh, uh, if I see my few last uh, semester works at my graduate school, it was underground. Peter Rose, when I proposed underground scheme for Montreal uh, peer development, I cut peer and I uh, dug into the underground and I thought the experience would be very strong there as a maritime museum and he said don't go underground and uh, I kept doing it he said uh, don't go I don't like personally uh, underground buildings and I don't think you can learn anything from me this semester if you do <laughs> underground <laughs> and, uh, but but I don't know I was so fascinated by underground but, uh, but uh, uh, as far as the underground, uh, when you go earth house, you go underground space, you can really see the sky. So underground architecture is totally about uh, architecture of light and sky. Fantastic work. Uh, Thank I'm you. Salah Dinamid. On the line of this underground, uh, I think looking at your work, I felt that I'm uh, in, in a journey of meditation. And looking at you, you also appear very quiet and very poised. Uh, and someone's work really gets to translate it into their uh, uh, personality and, and vice versa. Uh, could, could this be a, a reason uh, subconsciously that each of your work is a a meditative journey and, and, and to bring out the sub substance, a substantial thing, um, that's which very, you just... That's, that's very interesting. So, yeah, I will think about, think back, think about it on the way back to Korea in LA. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the answer. Yeah. But, but uh, I always think about uh, how strongly I was influenced from my father. He was uh, from far south of Korea, uh, Sangju area is pretty conservative, had a strong influence from Confucianism. So it really restrained the way of living. And uh, until my age, 35, at least, I never left any food on the table. Not only mine, but my friends. I felt so guilty because my, my father taught me leaving any single you know, uh, rice, you feel guilty. And uh, my uh, way of living was like that. And, and uh, he taught me another thing. Money is something not to borrow from anyone. Money is not anything to lend to anybody. <laughs> and uh, in my life, uh, uh, going to architecture schools and uh, working in uh, uh, architecture office uh, several years, I was never late, and uh, I was always precise, and and uh, so that kind of influence from my family and Korean tradition make uh, architecture more like a moral and using less material, and 
and uh, try to make a building that doesn't necessarily look very different from others, but still just uh, deal with all necessary things. And, uh, and I was glad to see Nicholas uh, today, but, but uh, my uh, old assistant and professor from Etaha, Switzerland, when I went to a, a exchange student, uh, they told me when I left the school, uh, it was a short period of time, but it might change your architecture. Uh, when I was in the United States, I thought creating something totally different and strong images was important. But when I went to Switzerland, Etaha, my teacher, uh, Mario Campi, asked me, you know, how you deal with the surroundings and, and uh, why it has to be that. And uh, so just uh, simpler and quieter architecture, I sometimes think, I got influenced from my great teachers like Mario Campi and and Mirko Zardini and yeah, so good teachers I had. Well, I'm tempted to ask you one more question. Uh, I mean, you mentioned the um, the Swiss connection, and, but perhaps thinking of the Korean connection. Uh, and you just you know we just mentioned that you know you know Kim Kiduk very well. Yes. South Korea Chobi Movie director who movie. got uh, Golden Lion a few years ago with uh, Pieta. Yes, yeah, I mean, he's my favorite uh, movie director, but especially in all his films, if I am not wrong in saying that there is an architectural mm -hmm. condition, a setting, you know, yeah, everyone, right. every right. one of the films. Right. So I don't know who is talking to who, the architect to the cinema, cinema maker or the cinema maker to the architect. And I was wondering if there's a conversation between the two of you, because I mentioned the theatricality that kind of is there. Mm -hmm. Because in some of your submerged houses, I imagine a dark South Korean thriller can take place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so are you asking me? Yes, you know. Uh, any. <laughs> Oh, are you asking me or you say, I thought you say you like his uh, No, no, I was work. wondering if there's a conversation between you and Kim Kiduk because I see architecture in his films and then... Uh, well, he's a uh, truly crazy guy. He's, uh, if you come to Korea, I will take to his place. And uh, he had one really famous hut in, which came in movie. And uh, I wanted to see that hut. I asked him, can you take me there? And he, of course, he said, uh, he took me there. It was all like, almost like abandoned. And uh, not even locked and abandoned. And, uh, and uh, I saw that trophy, golden lion, just laying down like, with the trash. And, uh, and, and uh, he... Uh, he's a uh, really a uh, crazy guy. And uh, if you want to watch one of his films, it's uh, uh, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. It has a beautiful scenes. And all the settings, he makes all of those things. And the last scene, he pulls the rock That's right. and walk is himself. I see. Yeah, so he does all the fun parts. But uh, he's like a uh, yeah, sage, uh, crazy guy and that's all I know about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one more, any more question? What is there? Up. He's uh, raising hand on the oh, back watch, there. Watch, watch. There's a question at the back. Thank you, sir, for your presentation. I'm a student of North South University. I have a question that uh, most of your work was uh, in the underground and you said that you like underground when going under, uh, but uh, I saw that the place, that site was control line in the hilly areas. In the hilly areas, the places, uh, the, most of the projects are in the hilly areas. But what if the projects, that means the site is in the flatland, how would you involve the light from the uh, viewing angle or so, without, if you don't input the light from the top, so what will be the solution if I am in, like in Bangladesh in the flatland? Uh, light is not my a primary concern. Sir, sir, sir uh, I, yeah. I just want mm -hmm. to add that uh, mm -hmm. 
your projects was uh, most of the time that was looking very much uh, interesting and uh, sir said that uh, that was like meditation room i also like that kind of room but mane what kind of solution would you like to give me to do that kind of stuff in this kind of flat land hmm to me uh, one of the most beautiful buildings i have seen is only seen in photograph is a church it's like ethiopia or some place do you know the name of it? it's like a big hall and a building underground and it looked so powerful to me i don't know what it makes me you know uh, feel so powerful maybe because you know human beings evolved with earth or cave and uh, light is uh, not as important in uh, my architecture at least as the wind or breeze breeze i think i feel sometimes like uh, humans developed from worms before we have eyes maybe we had skin you know a little bit of breeze passing your body make you feel very different so uh uh and uh, light is one of it and uh but earth i love the uh, cut section of the earth i think it's beautiful but uh creating the relationship so uh if it's a flat land uh, first you have to think about the drainage when you have a hill the naturally just the drains but in flat land uh think about the drainage or of course uh, uh to give more richness to the site maybe you can add some wall or just a uh, part of the building could be exposed or part of the building could go up but uh but uh just to create the moment of the relationship but i don't know what the relationship could be but uh you can say the light or view or wind or human or just a uh, progression of circulation or anything or like uh, landscape trees whatever but uh i think it uh, should uh, really depend on you but in my case uh if i look back i think i started uh, looking at this kind of architecture from my university studies my thesis and uh and at that time i read books about uh different ways of singing architecture and uh eastern philosophies i tried to find my root even though i studied in us for my undergraduate and graduate but uh but uh try to learn about the culture and i'm sure you know you have very very strong culture here in this region and uh uh and religion and culture and very strong and beautiful things and you can see carefully and and uh and bring that into these contemporary societies and show to us and share with us so so observing and understanding carefully could be one thing about the flat land you know maybe you can pick up flat land and try to see and understand and you will see a lot of things and you can find stories and and beliefs about flat land in this region i'm sure you will find many many interesting you know elements uh that you have interest in and you can address that maybe so your approach to architecture is very personal and it is very difficult to comment uh i was very intrigued i mean you are talking about objects and void relationship and that kind of thing but then you dig a hole in the ground and you put your architecture it's a, a it's very absolute your approach do you feel very uncomfortable in moving on natural topography for example in a, if you take rural urban context you know 
uh, in urban context, we transform, we distort, we modulate, we do a lot of things. We, we apply force on the landscape. In rural, we can accommodate ourselves. We can harmonize our living pattern with the landscape. Here, I was very intrigued that you have got very interesting, very modulating topography. But you cut holes, you may create a flat surface. No doubt it's interesting. I'm not saying that it's not, it's not valid. But it's a very special kind of validity which I cannot relate to or most people cannot relate to. Because uh, in the midst of all those natural walls, you are creating further walls by digging into the ground. So uh, maybe you can talk a bit about your philosophy. Because most of us think that architecture is architecture is concept, conceptualization and the engineering of architecture. These two things. The engineering of architecture is very strong in your design. But the conceptualization is somehow it's absolute, you know. Uh, one is left with the feeling that one must start it this way, this what I have got here as a site is not good enough. I must create my own site. Am I wrong? I think you're totally right. <laughs> Even though I don't understand their percent. Well, I just uh, believe more you know, how the building works. And the earth house is uh, honestly, it's a very comfortable space. People love to be there comfortable. But only problem is uh, air ventilation is not as good as above ground. And I thought it could work perfectly because it has one big open courtyard and small courtyard on the back. But it doesn't get enough ventilation in summer. And uh, I don't do that as many in as many projects. So I think it's those functional things very, very important. And uh, uh, I think uh, just uh, to be, uh, we discussed about education today and it was very interesting, but I uh, really believe uh, uh, to be a good architect, you know, you have to make a building that works well. And the earth house has problem with the uh, air ventilations. That's uh, more my philosophy. And uh, I think philosophy is kind of abstract things, you know. And uh, architecture is not even abstract. It's kind of uh, leftovers at the all, all struggles of egos and, and functions and money, material and realities. But, uh, but uh, I'm very happy with that uh, earth house and uh, it's a fun place, uh, but it cannot be uh, used really conventionally a lot. Thank you.